So we're going behind the screen. So I've been thinking a lot about this lately and to date this video quite a bit. I've been stuck here in a second lockdown in the Golden State of California without anything to do. And when you have nothing to do, your mind starts to wonder and mine starts to wonder quite widely. You see, I'm an avid tabletop role-playing game player, or TRPG for short. While the idea of sitting around a table with a group of people rolling dice and pretending to be someone I'm not sounds incredibly nerdy and basement dwellery, TRPGs have a special place in my heart for allowing my creativity to flow and share my ideas and stories with others and at the same time collaborate with them, the players, to create new stories, all while it being a game at the same time. Now, TRPGs also have another highly important role in the modern landscape of gaming, and I think a lot of people overlook or just simply don't think about it. Your Final Fantasies, your Knights of the Old Republic, your Fallouts, your Elder Scrolls, and many more all started from something, and that something, while certain video games did have their influences, started from something else. The tabletop game. So I can't talk about tabletops without actually going into a little history behind them as I'm sure not everyone knows too much about them and those that do are relatively new to tabletops and probably only got into them through Critical Role and think that the pinnacle of tabletop gaming is D&D 5th edition. Now don't worry because I will actually tie this into the video games too as without D&D and the contributions of Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson, RPGs as we would know them would either be non-existent or exist in an entirely different form. You see, Dungeons & Dragons wasn't the first tabletop role-playing game. There had been another game actually called Brownstein, which was a Napoleonic war game refereed by a man named David Wesley. You see, rather than players being generals commanding an army, they all played individual roles in a fictional town playing civilians, the mayor of the town, such like that. They all had goals that they had to achieve and would eventually come to a head with other players. While this all happened, one player was the referee who made sure all these situations would get resolved. It was this game that influenced Dave Arneson, who was a player in the game, which soon then influenced Gary Gygax, who went on to create Chainmail, and then Dungeons & Dragons, which was the adaptation of that. Dungeons and Dragons would go on to help both Arneson and Gygax make Tactical Studies Rules, or TSR, which sold a variety of other games, with D&D being their staple. It took the world by storm, both positively and negatively, and there was a lot of backlash actually from your stereotypical angry soccer moms thinking that it was a portable... portable? A portal to the satanic, it could be portable. And you got sweet things like chick tracks, and no, it's not actually as cool as you would think. These games pulled the imagination of a lot of nerds, and a lot of those nerds were also into computer games. Now since this was the era where the internet was in its infancy or just didn't exist, you had to play your tabletop games with people in person. So the next best thing was to play a video game that simulates the experience of playing a D&D campaign. Now, most of us know how influential D&D truly is, seeing as how there are numerous TRPGs that came into existence, like Traveler being one of the more earlier examples of TRPGs that weren't D&D. And since TRPGs were popular with nerds at the time, it was only inevitable that a group of nerds would make a little game called Wizardry. While I have no actual experience with the game itself, I do know that Wizardry was very influential on two well-known games, Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest. Well, again, my knowledge of either games is rather limited. I have more experience with Final Fantasy, seeing as how my original username back when I was a baby child was Titus93. <laughs> and yes, it's Titus, not Titus. And I can, as could anyone, see the influence D&D had on the series, with everything from the job system being just the class system from D&D to the way combat is handled in initiative order, 
though not so much anymore, but, well, it used to. Fallout, which originally started as a GURPS video game spinoff, and when the licensing fell through, they just made their own game, and hell, you can actually translate most of the old Fallout infrastructure into a tabletop game if you wanted. And, well, you can actually print your character out to a Word file, and you print that out too. Then, outside of Fallout, you have The Elder Scrolls, which, from my research, some elements were pulled from a D&D campaign that the creators were running at the time, and... Of course, I can't forget Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic either, because their system is literally adapted from D20, which D&D used. Right around the time, 3.5 was a thing, and then again, there was also the D20 Star Wars tabletop that actually was produced by Wizards of the Coast when Wizards of the Coast started producing D&D content. And what about those games that are direct spin-offs of tabletops? There's actually quite a few, mainly being Dungeons & Dragons like Neverwinter Nights, Baldur's Gate, Planescape Torment. Then you also have Shadowrun with Shadowrun Returns and its many other spin-offs. And while Shadowrun, as far as I understood, was a lot more popular than R. Talsorian's Cyberpunk 2020, Cyberpunk 2020 got the AAA release with CD Projekt Red's Cyberpunk 2077, which, honestly, I find kind of funny, and don't ask me why either, I just simply do. So, since I went on to talk about most things tabletop, I hope this shows how influential tabletop games, especially D&D, was in their development of some of your most beloved, highly mainstream games. And if you're anything like me, you'll start noticing and drawing comparisons between your favorite game's mechanics to that from a rulebook from a tabletop game. Now, with all that being said, I'm going to be doing a series which I'll be holding myself to all about tabletop games, reviewing them, talking about them, and the like. And of course, I'm going to be talking about the ones I'm most familiar with, as that would be easy for me to do, and... Well, then maybe go a step beyond and talk about the ones I'm not familiar with as well. I think I talk too much now, so I'm going to see you in the next video. I've gone up on drugs so much, I don't think I can come down, I really don't.